Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, we're gonna learn three concepts to improve your blues playing fast. But first, we need a groove. Yeah, that's cool, but I think it needs some guitar, too. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm doing. I've got a couple different motifs that I'm using. The first one is this. And then it has an answer. And I'm playing in this major pentatonic and this minor pentatonic position. I'm kind of blending. Then I go. So I'm playing. I could play it back there, but I put it here. It's just all about a matter of knowing where you are on the guitar and understanding this. So you be able to play it all over the guitar. So I'm doing a little bend there on the B flat. That's the first phrase, the answer. And then on the C, then I did a, and I did a little cap on my phrase there. And then I think I did it. And then so that's a D seven chord. I'm going up into this. And I'm playing this B flat to E because I'm thinking of the C7 chord. Right here. Then back down to the home position. So I'm going. Then. Then I came down to. Then a D augmented chord there, which gives it a really cool old school flavor. You have a motif here. That's the question. Then the answer. Ask it again. Same answer. Then another question. Little end on that phrase there. Then. And then so these all these little fragments I'm still thinking of chord shapes here and I'm thinking here That pentatonic position there. You have to know all these G, all these G minor pentatonics everywhere. And then up here. And then this position. So I got here, here, 
Then. Then. So you gotta be able to. You gotta be able to play licks out of each of these positions. And know where those blues notes are too. Like here in this position, there's a blue. Right there. And then here. So I got a blue note here. Then in this position, it's right there. Because we're here. Then here. You know where that is. So if you know where all those are, it's easier to combine these ideas and play these uh, question and answers. The other thing I'm doing is, so in D7, bending up to the root. Then I'm thinking C7 there, and then, then, it's because I'm thinking G7 there, that shape. The C, C major. And that's part of this chord here. So I'm thinking this progression. Use those chord shapes to come up with ideas out of. Okay, the next concept we're going to talk about is the changing third. What I mean by this is on the one chord, we have this B natural here. That's a third of the G chord. But um, when you go to the C7 chord, the four chord, it goes to B flat. And then when it goes back to G, you go back to the uh, to the B natural there. So you have to constantly be aware of that if you want to make it really sound like it's changing chords. So, so you can use the major blues. over the one chord, but when it goes to the four chord, you add that B flat. So check it out. Here's a B flat, then. Natural. On the one chord, use that B natural, the, the major third. When it goes to the four chord, you want to use that flat third. So you're going between major blues. Like G major pentatonic or G major blue scale, which has the B natural. But then when you go to the four chord, I'm using that using that E natural there, but you can use the straight blues, or use that third in that add the third to the scale. Then when it goes to D seven chord. I'm thinking D7, and then C7, and then on D7, D augmented is a nice sound. When you hear the B flat, it's the flat 7 of the C7 chord, and it's the one note that changes. But like I said, you can add to your blues scale, instead of playing street blues, add that E natural instead of the F on the C chord. Then add the B natural back in. Then. So just a refresher on the G major blue scale down here at the third fret. Next position up is here. Then, then, 
So it's like E minor pentatonic is the same as G major pentatonic. You can also add in the blue notes to the scale. So here in this position, so I added in that filling that chromatic note from the ninth flat third to the third. You have to really know all these scales all over the neck. And I would just actually practice them really slowly. And then I'd practice them in patterns like we've talked about in some of the other videos. And the third concept I want to talk about are double stops. Double stops are when you're playing two notes at once. So if I'm playing this B and G and I play figures like this, now I'm playing a three note chord, but it's part of a G7 chord. There's our C7 chord and then A lot of different turnarounds. Or so what I did there. Then part of a G7 chord. So I'm going C sharp E C, and then I'm going C E flat A, and then E flat to D. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, which has a bunch of ideas like this in it, you can go to rickbeato.com and find it there. Thanks for watching.